right, well, today is, is the beginning of a whole week, and we have found that every time we celebrate these feasts, God does something special in our lives. People get healed, people get delivered, people, you know, they get on fire, they get excited, they, they, they repent. They find out, well, I didn't do so good last week or last month or last year, so I guess maybe I need a little touch this year. God wants to meet with us this week, and I found out that he's a good, good father. Amen. 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 Today I'm just going to lay a foundation for the week, and so here we go. Uh, it's maybe not going to be super exciting. It's not Oh My Goshen. How many enjoyed Oh My Goshen? Yeah. Oh, I got to tell you, a pastor from Australia, I put it on Facebook. I, I don't usually do that, but I'm usually not on Facebook to start with. So, but I, I just felt like I was supposed to do that. Got a lot of comments on it. And I got a, a, a message back from Australia. Pastor Mark Doe, Rama Bible Church there on the Gold Coast, the, the, the big church. And he said, Bishop Bill, that message was great. I enjoyed that. Tell Reverend Connie hi for me, you know. That was like 10, 12 years ago, did we figure out? We haven't been back to Australia in how many years? Yeah, something like that, you know. But I, I thought that was pretty cool. So, oh my gosh, it made it to Australia. Amen. It's the place to be. Living by faith is the life for me. I just really enjoyed that. I want to go back and preach that one again. We had such a good time. Okay, Exodus 23, verse 16. Exodus 23, verse 16. And Deuteronomy chapter 16. These are two foundation verses just so that you have them in your concept. When people ask you, what are you doing that Jewish thing for? You'll... you'll Realize, no, it's not a Jewish thing. Uh, like, uh, forgot who brought out Reverend Ryan or Pastor Aaron. It's not a Jewish thing. This is a. These are the feasts of the Lord. You know. They all did. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. But our people here understand that now. So all right, Exodus twenty three sixteen and the feast of harvest. The first fruits of thy labors, which you have sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering. It's talking about two feasts here. Talking about Pentecost, Feast of Harvest, and it's talking about the Feast of Ingathering. I wanted to read this verse because it calls the Feast of Tabernacles ingathering. Everybody say ingathering. So this week, we're going to have several churches here. Several pastors are going to be speaking, a different pastor each night. We are, we are endeavoring to do this. Bam did this for years. But then I realized the in-gathering, wait a minute, you know. It's the whole church in the region. Uh, every week, the church in our city meets in different barns, different locations. But this time of the year is when they all came together. So this picture of the tabernacle is just such a beautiful picture. I mean, my, my. But there's all the different tribes gathered around. And this is Feast of Tabernacles. So we gather the Baptists, we gather the Methodists, we gather the Presbyterian, we get, get right? We, we, gather, we gather the Presbyterian once group. All the way here in your buggy. Yeah. Um, so all these are gathering around. For what purpose? Well, God's presence. Just a touch from him. For the Father to say, I love all of you. And I have something for all of you. And I want you to be blessed to go back and pour out what you receive. Yeah. Feast of ingathering, which is the end of the year, which thou gathered in the labors out of thy field. So the first time this festival is mentioned in the Bible, it's called the Feast of Ingathering. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, you know, when we say Feast of Tabernacles, it's got this picture to it or whatever. But Feast of Ingathering is a different concept, right? All right. And then... Um, People assembled from all corners of the nation to come together. Yes. I mean, people are literally going to Israel this week. 
I, I just tell people, this is closer than Jerusalem. This is a lot shorter trip. Yes. Amen. Now, this week I'm calling it a camp meeting because different churches understand the vocabulary camp meeting. Feast of Tabernacles, most churches don't know that, but this was the original camp meeting. Yes. This is where everybody gets camp meeting from, is this verse. Yes. So over the years, every denomination will have camp meeting, but they don't really know where it started. Right. Well, here's where it started, Exodus chapter 23. I mean, that's like a long time ago. Yes. And people are still having camp meetings. Now, they, they may not do it at the right season like God instructs them to, but they'll have it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we have done camp meet. Now, this would have been the week to have it in the tent. Yeah. How many remember the camp meeting we did in town and in the tent and everybody froze to death and <laughs> Pastor Aaron was trying to get all the music equipment covered up so it didn't get wet and moist and and, and heaters going in the tent and praise God. Oh. It was fun though. I mean, you know, it was fun. I remember Pastor Brian Cuddy and I was down on the ground sewing the tent together, you know, and everything. It, it, was, a, it was a fun thing to watch the pastors come together and, and, uh, and all that, you know. But then I decided, you know, the building is better. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, just, it is. Yeah. All right. Now, it, it's a week of rejoicing, and, and people have already said this, so we're going to come rejoicing. Yeah. How many remember that song? We will come rejoicing, bringing in the shit. Guess where that song came from? Yeah, that was this song, too. Every one enjoyed abundance of food, drink, and fellowship. Yes. So this is not just a... Oh my God, we've got to listen to the Bible pre preached for a week. No, we have food and fellowship. Yes. Every night, you know, it's going to be good. Yay? Yes. Yes. Amen. Deuteronomy 16, 13, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days. Celebrate it. After that, you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and your wine press. Be joyful at your feast, you, your sons. Well, Pastor Riley read this, but uh, your daughters, your men servants, your maid servants, the Levites, the priests, the aliens. This one says. Yeah. <laughs> and it's possible they might be showing up any time. We're hearing sightings. Invite them too, you know. Yeah. The fatherless, the widows who live in your towns. For seven days, celebrate the feast of the Lord your God at the place the Lord thy God will choose. I, I, I think sometimes he's chosen BAM for this because we're the only ones that know about it. Yeah. Right. That, that's simple. It. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and all the work of your hands. So, it's a gathering of all who live in the city. It's a gathering to the place where God uh, wants to meet. It's a time of bringing in your harvest. It's a time of blessing your harvest and labor. Uh, Pastor Riley, uh, that was a 15-minute offering presentation. Not that anyone noticed. But I'm thinking that's going to be longer than my message today, you know, but no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. It's a time of blessing your harvest. That's the point. God wants to bless that harvest. He wants you to prosper. And if you just follow his instructions, he will honor his word in that. And it's a time for your joy to be complete. It's the, it's the seventh feast. It's, it's complete. We understand that Jesus died for us. Man, that's the beginning. But some people stop there. Well, Jesus died. Well, there's more to the story. He was buried. He really did. You know, some people say, well, I don't think he went to hell. Well, he got the keys from there. So he must have got pretty close to that uh, place, you know. And then he rose from the dead. God raised, God the Father raised him from the dead. That's, that's just absolutely amazing. You can get excited about that. But if you stop there, it's going to be tying on 
on the end of the rope, hang on, hope that nukes don't go close to Sandusky, hope that the earthquakes stay in New York and doesn't shift up here, pray that they don't, you know, that's another message down the road that I was starting to uh, preach on. We, we, we can have that, uh, oh God, woe is me, I'm trying to hang on, sweet by and by until he comes. And it, it, no, we, we need to get to Pentecost and be filled with the Spirit and we can become overcomers and have a, have a reason for living. And we preach the gospel to every creature. We lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, goodness sakes. It, it, it becomes an exciting life if you make it to Pentecost. Yes. And then the good news is he said he'd be back. Yes. And so the Feast of Trumpets announces his return. And what do we do? Occupy until he comes. Yes. Atonement, yeah, there will be a judgment. We'll see how your harvest went. We'll see how well you did. But then Feast of Tabernacles will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. You know, some's going to play a harp in a mansion just over the hilltop. Some people's going to be here ruling and reigning for a thousand years. Pick, pick your theology, eschatology. Less Paul. Yeah. <laughs> I've called this whole week uh, Open Doors for Revival. Amen. Open Doors for Revival. Each pastor is going to bring a message about revival. I've asked each pastor, give me your best revival sermon. Amen. Thank you for the side over here. Give me your best revival sermon. You know, I, I said, well, you know, the Pentecostal preacher will probably be swinging on the chandeliers and rolling on the carpet and all that, and we'll have that kind of revival. And, I asked Pastor Brian, I said, what kind, what kind of a revival service does Baptists have? And he says, well, I think they'll love the Lord. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I would really rather people loving the Lord than loving excitement. You know, sometimes we can just get so caught up in excitement that we f forget where the excitement came from. Yes. Well, I guess what I'm saying is we need both. Yes. How, many, how many think, yeah, I'd like some excitement in the house too. Aren't you glad when you see children dancing and, you know? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So excitement. All right. I'll give you some Bible verses about revival. Revival really is a Bible thing. Okay. All right. So Isaiah... Uh, 5715, for thus saith the high and low, I love King James. I know you like your message Bible. But King James just, this says it, so, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. Hasn't that got a ring to it? I mean, that's just not the man upstairs. We're talking about the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. Whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Revival won't come to everybody. So revival comes to the ones who humble themselves. I mean, if you think you're all that in a bag of chips, well, you, God can't revive you because you got so much of your own life going on. You're just going to continue on doing what you know. Revival comes to the humble ones. I need more of God. How about you? I mean, it's just simply that. I just come every night and say, God, more of you, less of me. Because the more of you and the less of me, the better things turn out. God will bring revival to that. You come with a humble attitude, you will experience revival. Amen. Now, revival comes to the ones who are repenting contrite. I don't, know, I don't use contrite in my everyday vocabulary. But contrite means repent. So not only humble, but repent means, well, I am going to stop this because I need the life of God in me. This, this has brought life to me, but it's not the life that I really need. So I repent. I change my mind about some things. Amen. So that's 
one verse about revival. Number two, Psalms 85, 6. Wilt thou not revive us again? Again? Well, revival needs to be again. Well, I, I got revived back in 1982. Well, good for you. This is 2024. It's time for another one. Revive, wilt thou not revive us again? I mean, the psalmist is saying, I love David. He's just, you know, so honest. Will you revive us again, or was that the, the last time? I mean, it was lovely that I sensed your presence two years ago. Will I ever sense it again, or have I just got to live on that? Wilt thou not revive us again? And he goes on to say why. That thy people may rejoice in you. Yes, that's what it is. You see, sometimes Christians just, you know, they get burnout. They get empty. They get worn out serving. No different than people in service in the community, doing hospitals, jails, all sorts of ministry. My goodness, you get burnt out after a while. You give out, you give out, you give out, you give out. And pretty soon you're going to have to put something back in. And, and God is just simply saying, I've, I've established this week to fill you back up again so that you can go back out there and deal with those four kinds of people. Because some of those people are going to be tough. Yes. I posted on the blog, and, uh, you know, about living in the wilderness. I'd live in the wilderness for nine months out of the year in the motorhome and all that, and then go to the mission field, and I'd take people to the mission field. And I said, I, I needed to have, I needed to know how to live by faith in Goshen before I went to the wilderness. Yeah. Yes, you don't learn to live in the wilderness by faith until... You don't try to live it out there. No. Learn it here. Right. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, and then I take people to the mission field, and I, I'd end up having to use my faith because they'd get sick. Sure. Oh, yes. And I'd have to use my faith to get them back home safe. Yes, sir, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, Guy one time got so sick, he, he was green, you know, and he was a seasoned minister, he thought. But until you, when you get there, there's a whole bit, there's a whole different story. Yeah. I mean, there's bugs in that water, yeah, and you get and you get thirsty, and you decide you're just going to drink it anyway, even though you see things floating yeah. in it. And you you've got to decide whether that is going to affect you or it's not going to affect you. So he got sick, so I had to carry him for a little bit. Then I made him preach while he was still sick. He hated me. He was, he didn't say go to heaven, but I think he was <laughs> cons considering that. <laughs> and I says, you're preaching anyway. So anyway, he, he came back and thanked me afterwards and he said, thank you. I, I, would have, I would have gone all my life getting out of that situation and never learning faith in it. And he says, now that I've overcome that, when, when something like that happens again, I'll know what to do. It's just the devil trying to stop me from doing something. It's not about the sickness. It's not about being healed. If you know you're healed, you are healed, you'll do what a healed man will do. But it's, it's, not, it's not the healing you, you, you need to be believing for. It's believing what God told you to do is what is trying to be stopped. I don't know why I went there. Uh, revival again. You, you can't live on yesterday's experience. You need a touch from God today. You have to stay up until 1.30 in the morning talking to Pennsylvania guests. I mean, you need to be revived. You need to go to bed at some point. Revival produces rejoicing in God. Too, ma too many people are complaining about their job, their ministry, Oh, God, it's just so tough out there. It's just so tough out there. Well, you need revival because if you got revived, you, you'd be rejoicing in it. You count it all joy when you fall into different temptations. Knowing this, the trying your faith works patience and you rise up above it. Yes. Run into these people. They don't want God. Boy, they need me. They don't know God. 
shoe salesman goes down to another country, you know. He writes back and says, my God, don't, don't send anything. Nobody wears shoes down here. There's just no market for it whatsoever. Another shoe salesman goes down there, calls back home, says, my God, send all the shoes you can. No one's got shoes here. Well, there's just a bunch of heathen at work. Boy, are you in a good fishing spot. I mean, but revival causes you to rejoice in whatever. Because you're rejoicing in God, not in it. I used to tell people on the mission field, uh, don't, don't pray over the food and try to turn it into sanctify. You know, people go to the mission field, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just cast out every sickness, disease out of this. I just pray over that. God just bless this food. No, the Bible says receive it with thanksgiving and it's blessed. There's where it's going to take faith. I'm thankful for this. <laughs> I am thankful. I will be thankful. <laughs> it's just a different story. If, if revival comes, you'll rejoice in whatever. How many wants revival? And it says again, wilt thou not do it again? Well, I believe he will. Hosea 6.2, after two days, he will revive us. Okay, not until Wednesday night. <laughs> I don't have time to teach on this, but this is pretty prophetic. Jesus has been gone for 2,000 years. A day is 1,000 years is a day to the Lord. He's been gone, and he very well may, in this third thousand years, raise us up again. Amen. We are certainly living in that time. And in the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Amen. Uh, that's when you finally get to the promised land. Yeah. You're out of the world, came to Egypt. Goshen is the place to be. Some will live in the wilderness, but the promised land's a long ways, and there's a whole lot of stuff in the wilderness before you can get there. You may never get there this side of uh, eternity, but we do know there is a place. Yes, sir. Heaven is a real place. In your life, um, I almost wanted to tell some people the other day, the only people that's in the promised land are dead. Yes, sir. Kind of just saying, you know. There is, there is a final destination. Yes, Amen. <clears throat> now we just occupy until he comes. <clears throat> Wherever we live, there's people to witness to, people to love, people to care about. Yeah. Don't get so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. You know. All right. All um, right. Psalms 80, 18. So will not we go back from you? Quicken us, and we will call upon your name. Turn us again, O Lord, God of hosts. Come, uh, cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Quicken us. Make us alive again. Yes. Make us alive to faith. Well, I, I prayed the sinner's prayer, so I'm going to heaven someday. Well, I don't know if you're alive in faith. Yes, thank you very much. Quicken. Yes. You know, that sounds so... <sighs> quick. You know what quick is? It's right underneath your nail. Just go ahead and, and uh, stick a pin in there, and you will come alive. Yes, yes. You will, you will come alive. That's, that's what he's saying here. Are you alive to your faith like that? Whoa, I can believe God. Okay. Maybe, maybe we need to get some pins out for this week. All right. Turn us. Turn us again. How, how quickly can we humble ourselves, repent, come to the Lord, and then we, we get on our way, and, and it's kind of like, God, I got it now. I, I got it. I can handle this now. How many has children? Yes. I, I can handle this now. I can handle this now. I don't think so, but, you know, go ahead. Give it a shot. I got this. When you fall down, it'll quicken you to realize that you didn't make it, you know, or whatever. Shine your face on us with your presence. 
This is what we need to anticipate coming in. Don't just sing the songs. Don't just follow the bouncing ball. This, this door right back here is knock, knock, knock on heaven's door. Ooh, I thought it opened. <laughs> Behind that door is his presence. And, and you have to press into his presence. God inhabits the praises of his people. People say, well, God is everywhere. Yeah, but behind that door is a little more. And, and once you step through that door and, you, and, you, and you're in his, uh, Liam was up here Wednesday night. I may remember this. And I walked up here and Liam was just finishing up prayer. He didn't look at his notes at all. Did you notice he never looked at his notes? He didn't open his eyes to look at his notes. He was, he was just praying with his eyes shut, just going for it, praying prayers that people who have been in church for years have not prayed that well. Amen. No, his head's getting big, and then he'll fall down, and he'll have to repent. But I'm, I'm just saying that's, that's that. And when I walked up, he was like, I don't know where I am, what I'm doing. See, he was in his presence. And afterwards, he said, man, I've never felt his presence like that before. Yep, there, that's different. That's different than just praise and worship and, you know, I, I grew up in Pentecost, you know, goosebump. Shandai in a bow tie. His presence, his, his presence is different. Yes, sir. Some people in, their, in his presence, they just fall on their knees. Some people in their presence, they run around the sanctuary. Some people in his presence just stand there and go, oh, my God. Some people cry. Some, some people laugh. I mean, in Australia, for about two years in a row, I mean, it was the laughing movement. I mean, it, it was just, everybody was laughing. It was a happy time. <laughs> but that, that was it. But see, then they started going after that instead of after God. When they were seeking after God, they would laugh, and they got filled with the Spirit, and they were full of joy. But then pretty soon it became, I'm coming to church, and we're going to work up a laughter. Yes, sir. Yes. Boo, man, you can get off in a hurry, you know? There's the true prophetic. But, it, but if you start running around, i got to have a prophetic word from the prophet. Well, you, you, you quit seeking him. Yes, yes. Thank you. Don't, don't seek the gift. Seek the gift giver. If you seek him, he'll give you the gift you need, not the one you think or what you want. Are we doing okay? Yes. We need his presence. Yes. And when his presence comes on us, it'll be different for everybody. So we can't go through this week with a cookie cutter thing. Exactly. Yeah. You, you just come in humble and say, I need you, God. Yeah, no box allowed. <sighs> I mean, I've been in the ministry for 40 years, and I'm here to tell you, I want a new touch from him this week. Because this year is going to give us all sorts of new, exciting adventures. Are you with me? I mean, we got Putin and Kim shaking hands and nuclear weapons about ready to go. We've got, well, I guess the government didn't shut down, do they? They send another $6 billion to another country. Somehow they came up with... The world's in a mess. I don't know if you, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, it's just, there's not too many smart people out there anymore in these places. I mean, knows we need the wisdom of God. Amen. What's going to fix our nation? God. What's going to fix our city? God. What's going to fix our church? God. What's going to fix your marriage? God. What's going to fix your family? God. What's going to fix your physical body? What's going to fix your mind? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, I'll take God too, right? Yeah, always come to that. God. All right, Habakkuk uh, 3.2. Oh, Lord, I have heard your speech and I was afraid. <clears throat> Interesting. <clears throat> the word afraid there really means more reverence. 
I was in awe. I heard your speech and, wow, haven't heard anything like that before. Oh, Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. Under that, you know, for me, I want his work he's doing in this city revived. So he's doing a work here. He's doing a work at the hospitals. He's doing a work in the... Uh, the uh, in law enforcement, he's doing the work in the homeless, he's doing the work in, he's doing the work in the churches, he's, come on, he's, he's doing the work in our city. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Yeah. And those people of influence need a touch from God, yeah. Lord, God. so that his work can be advanced. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes, you know, when we, we help the poor, we get we forget God in the whole thing. Yes, blessed are the poor in spirit. It's just another rant that I get on sometimes. But, you know, people feel good about helping the poor. Well, did you tell them about God? Right. right. Did, you let them did, you, did, you, did you lead them to a source? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Acronym for poor is passed over opportunities repeatedly. Right. Right. I mean, you can continue to give people a hand up and they'll be back next week. Yes. You can feed them a fish, but if you teach them how to fish, you fed them for a lifetime. You know the story. Um, you know, when you work in uh, an institution like Ann, I work midnights over in one in Marlette, you know, and, you know, uh, it comes a time where you hand out the meds. And, you, you know, I found out that once I gave them the meds, there, there was like... Uh, windows that closed over their eyes. I, I mean, I, w I wasn't able to communicate to them anymore. Yes, sir. I mean, they were peaceful and they were happy. Didn't have to strap them into the wheelchair from trying to kill me. But there was a time where you could preach to them and minister to them and you, you could see it getting to them. But then when it came med time, you know, I mean, it was over with. I knew it was over with. There was just no sense to even bother, you know? But, you know, dealing with the people when they're not on those meds, it'll wear you down to the point where, is it med time yet? Right. <laughs> I don't think early would hurt. <laughs> Whatever your job is, the, the enemy is going to try to wear you down. Yes, sir. He's going to get you to just wear down and just ah, fooey with it, you know. Not even going to bother. No one ever listens anyway. Nobody ever changes. Well, you did. Somebody must have stuck with you. Reverend Ryan has, and it's taken me how many years to pound on him, you know. Now, Bobby Sue, she's... She's one of those, you know, overachiever. She gets saved, delivered. And to my understanding, she just went off her medication. Is that true? Yes. And didn't die yet, she said. Is that what you said? No, yet. Yeah. Period. Yeah. What, no withdrawals? No, no. Come on. But then she just believes God. The rest of us are trying it out. You know what I mean? She's already witnessing to everybody. I think she's got a couple people online uh, this morning because they see what God did in her life. Amen. I mean, she's off a major addiction that has caused some major things in her life for several years. I mean, Reverend Ryan would be here and he'd tell me about her and I'd say, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, my Goshen. And we'd pray for you. We would talk about you. And then you go to bed and doubt about her. And wonder, you know. I knew another preacher. Uh, he's been here preaching. And he told me that he had a son like that, and they just, they almost gave up on him totally, you know. But God. He can do what no man can do. Revive your work. There has to be somebody that's still revived 
to, to put their hand to the work that God wants to do. So there's people on drugs. There's people homeless. There's people in hospitals. There, you know, you don't go to the hospital feeling good. You go there because something's wrong. Funerals. There will be a funeral this week. There, see, it's a whole different hurt. Pastors have to be revived to do funerals. Does that make sense? Because you can't just say, well, they're in a better place. That is so shallow. Yes. There's, there's, there's people that's still here that's not in that better place. And that person's not hearing you anyway. It's the people that you're talking to that's sitting there. There's a work that God wants to do. Amen. And don't think yours is the only thing God's doing in town. Please. You know, uh, Reverend Mark, he knows that the trucking industry feeds the world, so it's the most important thing in the world. <laughs> it is pretty important, but there's other, there's other people besides truckers. I mean, we have two of them here. Where'd Ro oh, Robert's online. Yeah. Absolutely, but that's a nation of people. Yes, sir. Amen. And then there's the buggy people, the ones. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just feel good about that. <laughs> Revive his work. How many wants to come in this week with the mindset, God, revive your work in our city? Because it's not just revive me, but you have a plan for this city. Years ago, I went to the mayor and city council and preached a message, sand us key. And I said, sand, moments of time, us, we the people, hold the keys of the kingdom. And w whatever we unlock in heaven can be loose in our city. Whatever we lock in our city, heaven will back it. All the lamp lighter effect down the streets was a result of that. They wanted to light up the city. It wasn't quite what I was talking about. We are the light of the world. I said that we are the light of the world. You know, we gotta, we gotta shine, you know. God wants to do something with this city. It's the county seat, so that's, that's important also. How many wants God to do in this city what maybe he can't do in another city? Uh, I'll be sharing about this later in the week, but God has opened certain portals in different places around the nation. There's like a portal. Revival will happen some place, and people will go for miles. When, when signs, wonders, and miracles start happening, people will show up for miles. Alfonso, what, what he had a 85-day revival, and he only had... A, one or two meetings scheduled, and the thing went for, I can't remember how long. We were in uh, <clears throat> McGregor, Texas, right there where Mr. Bush has his farm. There's a church there. We had three-day meeting, I think. We just, I, I don't know. We were scheduled there, and then we were scheduled in Austin. We were scheduled in <clears throat> some place else, I forgot. And, uh, and revival broke out. We were there for, what, 14 days? 21 days. We were there for 21 days. I had to cancel the other meetings. I mean, we had service every night for 21 days. I mean, and then it ended just as fast as it began, you know? And, and you knew, well, we're done. Well, God was done. But man, what a time and a half, you know? So that still happens today. It's not just Smith Wigglesworth, or it's not just, you know. Um, <clears throat> amen. Okay. Pastor Riley took all my time, so I've got to keep moving along. <laughs> two, two Chronicles, yeah. two Chronicles 714. This scripture is loaded. Yes. It's just loaded. And um, we, sometimes we pass it over, but it, if you read every word and emphasize it, if my people, qualification, if my people, 
He's not saying if the, the sinners in the town say anything. 2 Corinthians 7.14. If my people, which are called by my name, there, there has to be a calling on them. How many, how many feel that God's calling you to do something? Right? I mean, you don't feel like you're just a church attender. You, you feel like, man, I have to be a part. Yes. Call by my name. Shall humble themselves. There's that thing again. Don't, don't try to bring all your gifts and talents into the body and say, oh, God, I know you're impressed that I'm here to help you. Yes. Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Yes. Man, there's a lot of stuff leading up to that. Yes, sir. They always say, what do you expect, a million dollar answer to a 10 cent prayer? I mean, they, you, there, there might have to be some energy involved here. <clears throat> then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. What's, what's your land? Right. Your land is my land. Yeah. <laughs> What's your land? Well, I mean, start with your marriage. Start with your family. That's your land. Amen. What's your land? Well, uh, you know, this particular area of ministry in the church, you know, the deacon and the ministry of helps. Well, what's your land? Well, the minstrel, the music, that's a, that's a land. Uh, musicians need to be healed. Not physically. I, I could meddle, uh, but I will just move right along because I want you to like me on the first day. Um, so what do we see in just this verse of Scripture? Number one, humble yourself. Number two, pray. Number three, seek his face. Number four, turn from our ways of doing things. And revival comes. Amen. So l let's just kind of walk this out all week long. Just humble yourself yes. before tonight's service. Mm -hmm. Pray. Pray about tonight's service. Seek his face. Yes. Yes. See what, <clears throat> you know, I keep asking all the ministers every service, what does God want to do in the service tonight? We ought to come with an idea of what God wants to do tonight. Yes. Well, he just wants to be there. Well, no. He, I mean, no, sometimes it's just a uh, an encouraging night. Sometimes it's a anointing for healing. Sometimes it's a little sterner. Or sometimes it's a teaching night. God has a plan for every night. So, so don't come and think, well, the best is for the last. Every, every night God's going to do something different. So don't miss out on that. That could have been your night. 2 Timothy 4.3 the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They'll vote in the preacher they want to hear. And they have enough authority and control to do so. Because they heap Teachers, because they have an itchy ear. I want, you, I want you to preach on this. I just want you to preach about heaven. And then I'll go home and live like hell. Right. Yeah. This, this, is, this is where we're at. I mean, you go into the public school system and, uh, you know, boy, I just feel like meddling sometimes. I'm not preaching for a while again. Other pastors are preaching here, but... Uh, it, it is so watered down now. It is so, it, it's like God's wearing the teachers down. Why bother? You know, they have bathroom passes now because they have a doctor's report. They're just going in and vaping. Is anyone smart enough to know that? My wife is. Right. Sit down. You don't have to go to the bathroom. Oh, I have a medical issue. And it goes off in the middle of my class every day. Right. Go before you. Come, people, you know, that have to go to the bathroom during the service. Did you try going before? Yeah. You know, when I traveled with the kids, you know, this is a bathroom. Use it. I don't have to go. Use it. Because <laughs> five minutes down the road, I got to go. Well, 
wear a diaper. <laughs> We're on the move now, you know. This too shall pass. <laughs> <laughs> They'll not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts heap themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn their ears from the truth. So there's two words here, doctrine and truth. Yes, sir. Well, then, apparently, doctrine and truth will produce revival. Amen. So the time will come where the enemy is trying to turn people away from the two things that will cause revival. Yes. Solid doctrine is going to have is, is something that you can build your faith on, put your trust on. Yes, and then truth opens your eyes to yes. what the possibilities yeah. are. Yes. The missing. There, there are open doors this week. Yeah. There are open doors this week. So come each night and hear the truth. All right. I got this from the dictionary. Are you okay for dictionary? Merriman Webster, I think he was a Christian, so at least we'll go with that one. Revival. To live again. It's, it's, it's live again. Vive is life. Re life. Re Here's some definitions a reviving of interest. Have we lost interest? Yeah. I saw an article the other day. Uh, why do we go to church? And then the, the article started going about, we don't through the summer because there's camping and there's this and there's that and there's sports and there's, you know, all that. But, you know, September's coming. So we kind of we gauge our church time with school time. And we, we like to go because, you know, we like to fellowship with other people. And it, it's good for the kids to meet other kids, and, you know. And I wouldn't necessarily call that a church. That's just kind of a whatever. A new interest. How many wants to get interested again? I mean. I may remember when you first looked at this Bible and you just wanted to inhale the whole thing. Yep. You know? Well, how's, is there, have you lost interest in this? This is really good stuff in here. Need a new interest in that. New interest in preaching the word. I know it's foolishness to men, but it is the power of God yes. unto salvation. Yes. Um, a new presentation. That's why we need new songs. We need new sermons. We need we have to have a new presentation because people can get so familiar yeah. with something that they don't, it, it goes right over their head. Right. Yeah. Or a new publication. Yeah. Yeah. All right, making alive again those who have been alive but have fallen in, into what is called a cold and dead state. Wow. Well, wow. I don't know. Just go ahead and visit a church and look around and see how much life is really going on there, or is it tradition? Is it, well, that's what we do. We've done it for 50 years, you know, and man, they, they, apparently they got there to begin with because they had life. But it needs to be revived again. Is there a need for revival? They're Christians, they have life, but they need reviving to bring them back to their first love, the healthy growth of the spiritual life to which conversion was meant to be. Yeah. yeah, meant to be. God wants to revive you to be what he meant you to be. He just didn't die so that you could get to heaven. He wanted to put life in you now. Christians ought to be alive. That's what you were meant to be, not, not hanging on until Jesus comes. Be an influence to everybody. A church revival involves a group of Christians praying and seeking the Holy Spirit's presence together while rejoicing over a renewed spiritual exuberance. It's, it, it's not just you. It's, it's somehow numbers help. Yes. Yes. And as we gather this week, it, it should build, a, build an excitement yes. Yes. just in that. And then we together worship him and expect yes. his presence. Yes. 
The purpose of a church revival is to allow the power of the Spirit to transfer in both believers and non-believers alike. Yes. Don't forget that the Spirit of God wants to revive Christians, yes. but He also wants some non-believers to come and check it out. Yes. That's right. yeah. Amen. Amen. And when they see you're alive, they're going to say, yeah, you know, maybe I kind of want to check that out. Simply put, it means to make something operative or valid again. Is your, is your Christianity operative? Is it valid? Well, I'm a Christian. Well, who besides yourself thinks so? It's the awakening or quickening of God's people to their true nature and purpose. Christian, Christ-like. Christ-like. All right, so <clears throat> open doors. What we have here this week, the prophet laid it out. This is the door to salvation. This is the door to rest. This is the door to dreams. And this is the door of deliverance or escape. Yes. All of those doors will be open all week. Amen. And of course, the knock, knock on heaven's door. When God releases his power, the door of salvation will be available and open. Um, that's an open door. Um, the door of heaven is an open door of communication and agreement with God. Yes. Yes. God is going to tell us what we can have, what he wants to give us, and we just get in agreement with it. The word amen uh, was meant to be used towards God's word first before we used it to the preacher. We're not saying amen to the preacher. We're saying amen to God's word. With your stripes, I'm healed. Amen. God has established a door here in Goshen for his presence. Remember, there was a special presence over Goshen that wasn't in, the e in Egypt. Although God was in Egypt, there was a special presence in Goshen. And we need to come into that place yeah. of his presence. Yeah. This door is a portal to heaven. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Forty years I've, I've seen this. I mean, you've heard me tell the story of my little spot over there. You know, I step off to the side of my desk and, you know, I'm filling out the computer thing and see who's on, writing things down and making sure the words is up on the screen on the PowerPoint and, you, you know, just, you know, trying to make sure everything's going on in the service or whatever. Right? Yeah. You're busy. Am I worshiping God? Kinda. That's just like you. You're running a camera, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're kinda worshiping God. I just take a moment and walk over there and close my eyes and just shut everything off and Erase my chalkboard and just want to hear from him. I call that my little portal over there. It's the little glory spout. It's the little spout where the glory comes out. It's just, you have to find that. You can call it your closet. You enter into your secret place. You, you know, you, you, you need to create one. <clears throat> what I'm saying is this week, this is a great glory spot. It's just a good portal for God to do what he wants to do this week. Is that okay for you? One last uh, verse here. Matthew 16, 17. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. You're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. You're the Messiah. You're the Savior. And, and Jesus, the Son of God, says, I didn't reveal that to you. It wouldn't matter how many parables I taught to you. You, you probably wouldn't get it. But the Father revealed that to you. And upon that revelation, he said, I can build my church. And then verse 19, and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of this door right here. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, yes? Well, then God's revealed that to you. 
I mean, you may thank the pastor or thank the neighbor or thank whoever for it or mom or dad or Uncle Fred, but God revealed it to you. And if he's revealed that to you, then he has given you the keys to that door. So every time you come in here, look at this door and say, you know, I got a key to that door. I might just well unlock it if no one else does. Because I want to know what he has for me. <laughs> because if I do, whatever I bind on earth, will, heaven will back it. Whatever I loose on earth, heaven will loose it. In other words, God's got what you need back there. And if there's some bondage in your life, you can, lock, you, you can just simply go through that door and lock some things. I don't want that anymore in my life. I don't want that influence anymore in my life. I'm done with the medication. I just locked that. Heaven will back it. Because we have the right to those keys. Is that good news? All right, actions that will open doors. How many wants to open a door this week? Yes. Good. So, Liam, write these down. Good news opens doors. The gospel preaching opens doors. <coughs> Number two, open doors, prayer. Prayer opens doors. Yeah. Prayer changes things. Yes, right. yeah. I love Reverend Mark, you know, we talk, talking. Then he says, well, I think it's come to that. It's time to pray. Because <laughs> prayer will open a door. Number three, humility will open a door. You just come in here humble and a door will open. Because God sees that. Amen. I mean, the prodigal son, I mean, what a mess. What a disappointment. What a, what a whatever. But he just says, you know, it's better to be a servant in father's house. <laughs> God, I'm turning into Pastor Aaron here. Um, do you understand that humility of coming back? I, I don't want to get back and think your son's back, you know. He just some, comes back and says, man, I, I just want to be a servant in your house. And God opens the door. His heart bursts out through that and makes a difference just because of humility. Another thing that opens the door, repentance. We've seen all these things. If you just change your mind, revival's on its way. Amen. Forgiveness. If you don't forgive others, neither will your Heavenly Father forgive you. So this week, somebody's done you wrong. If not, wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph had to have a door opened. He was in prison. Someone had done him wrong. But he, he chose to just open the door of forgiveness. I just forgive. And just start interpreting dreams for the butler and the baker. Just wanting to serve. You have to forgive. Just let it go. I may remember my message on forgiveness. Best, best definition of forgiveness. Let it go. But they did this. Let it go. Spiritual hunger. They that hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. Come hungry. Amen. Unity. The blessing of God comes on unity. So when we come in, don't, let's not look at another de denomination on the other side of the chair there someplace and say, well, you know, I hope they get it. Well, they're probably praying to hope you get it, you know. Unity. We all need each other. Yeah. Help. Everybody say help. help. Help opens doors for revival. It's been said from other pastors in this community that we have the greatest ministry of helps team in this whole area. Other pastors have said that. One pastor's wife says, we need you to come in and teach about this. Well, we can, you know. Helps opens the door for revival. A door greeter, if you open that door, it means something to a visitor coming through. Amen. Yes. An usher meeting you to carry your diaper bag in or help you with your ch that That opens a door for revival. What's that? Life again. 
the, I, I don't know, even at the Walmart, as Bobby Sue would say. I don't know if anybody uh, will meet you at, the, out at your car and help you carry your kids in while you shop and watch them. I, 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 don't, I don't think so, you know. But if they come here, if you are a good helper, you open the door, you direct them here or there, you, that opens the door for revival. Amen. Service. Service opens the door for revival. Now, see, now that's getting into the community. Whatever you do to serve, how do you serve in the community? Don't just serve here. Serve wherever you go. Like Reverend Ryan was explaining to a person the other day, he said, well, how come they, you know, we got some deacons that open the door for us and carry stuff, you know? And people used to criticize me for that, you know, wow, everybody carries your briefcase. And I'm thinking, I only have one. Not everybody takes turns carrying my briefcase. And I don't know if you know it or not, I actually carried it from my house into my car all the way here. I can probably make it the rest of the way. It's just training people. It's just helping people have a heart of a servant because you have to learn it here because when you go out there, that's what you have to do. Right. 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 Tell me a waitress that you tip that doesn't serve. We have to serve the community. We have to learn the heart of a servant. Right. It's not exalting somebody. Heaven's sakes, it's just serving them. If they can't walk, help them. That doesn't mean you're worshiping them. Amen. Serving. And then giving. Oh, yeah, that's that four-letter word, give. But give opens the door. I mean, if you hand somebody some money and just, I just want to bless you, it opens the door. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. It opens the door for them to say, what are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> and say, you don't know all I'm up to. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Giving. All right. So these other doors, once again, salvation, door of harvest. What will the people need to be saved from? Not just saved one time, but what do they need to be saved from this week? I need to be saved from a devil's hell, but then I needed to be saved from medication. Yeah, I, need, I need to be saved from my stinking thinking. What, what do you need to be saved from? Bad doctrine, whatever. The second one is rest. Resting in and ceasing from your own works. What are the battles in people's minds that they need to find peace in? This week, if you're troubled, get through this door. He has peace that passes all understanding. You can just rest in God. The war is over when you rest in God. That's right. If you hold your peace, the Lord will fight your battles. You've got you to enter into that door. And then dreams. Dreams are real. If you had a dream and you lost that dream, well, dream again. Dream again. God has some appointments for your future. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning of the end. He knows exactly what he's called you to. And, and we're many times in the now and the not yet. It looks like it was going good. It's really not looking like it's going good. Dream again. Get through this door. How many people have lost hope and need to be, need to dream again? That door is open. Deliverance. Escape from the natural man and unclean spirits. There's a Deliverance. You have to be delivered from yourself as well as many times you need to be delivered from unclean spirits. So are there really demons? Well, yeah, some people can't do that stuff without some help. Or somebody else in there, you know? Um, what spiritual, mental, physical bondage are people in need that they need to escape from? And then set fire to the rain. Expect the fire of God this week to burn those bondages off. How many knows the three Hebrew children were bound up, but the fire burnt the bondage off, but they were not touched. The fire of God has a way of burning the right stuff and, and setting you free at the same time. So, prayer. Uh, how many wants to help me this week?
Yes. Open a door for revival. Say, yep, I'm on a, I want to open a door for revival. Maybe I can't open them all, but I'm going to try to open one. Yes. Well, then pray. Pray earnestly, even the rest of the day and throughout the week. Uh, come hungry. If you just come hungry yourself, someone else will see your hunger. Uh, serve. Door greeting, food preparation, musicians, singers, cameras, audio, video, children and toddlers ministry, ushers, parking lot, halls, altar. Be revived in your ministry so that you can be a, uh, help others. And humility and enthusiasm. And friendliness, like be friendly. Yes. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> How'd you get in here? <laughs> I mean, it's a legitimate question, but it was just the wrong presentation. You know? <laughs> Esther 4.14, who knows whether you've been called into the kingdom for such a time as this. If you hold your peace, deliverance and enlargement will come from somewhere. God will find somebody. Why not? Why not just say, Lord, here I am, send me. I'm going to open a door this week because somebody from the north, south, east, and west, whether they taste good or they don't smell good or they don't do anything right, there's a door for them to come through and be changed for the rest of this year. This is the window for it. Catch a hand with somebody. Father, I thank you. I think that, you, that you're going to revive your work. and you, Your work is loving people, healing people, delivering people, uh, giving people peace, calming their fears and their emotions. Your work is just loving your children. So, Father, we join with you. We join with you today. And, Expect to see change in people's lives, and we will rejoice. I mean, heaven rejoices when one sinner, one that's missing the mark, comes to a repentive change. And we give you praise for it. And everybody said? Amen. 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 All right.